Greetings, one and all. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatics. Time for the feedback loop. So good to have you all along. We've got, um, oh, goodness gracious, who have we got in here today? Well, we've got Eve, we've got Ricardo, we've got Bryn, and then Abby. Just I just saw a note from Abby, so we'll, we'll check in with her as well. Um, we've got a, a lot of different, uh, we're moving in a lot of different directions, and I want to make sure we have time to cover everything. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, out of the gate, we've got Bren's competitive matrix. She is doing competitive research um, regarding uh, the fresh market, um, uh, the fresh market project, and you know she's basically going through and looking for competitors to begin picking apart to better familiarize herself with uh, with the um, with the, with the target market for the for the uh, stakeholder and one of the things that you mentioned here Bren um, and I'm looking specifically over here and you said you're struggling to find local competitors with a lunch subscription service um, that's tipic that's that's going to be an issue from time to time when you when you're moving into a especially if you're moving into a new area um, sometimes you have to broaden out and then there's a couple of ways that you can broaden that scope one um, while I know that the stakeholder talked about a lunch service um, I, I do think that that's probably you know a lunch service would be like I'm focusing on a breakfast service or I'm focusing on a dinner service what I really want to focus on is like a delivery a food delivery service um, so I would broaden it out away from a particular uh, time, you know, basically um, a particular time or segment of the market. Um, I would just look broader and because I don't necessarily know if we've figured out yet whether lunch is even going to be their thing. Um, I think we need to, because is that really what the customer, you know, we haven't talked to customers yet. We don't really know if there's even an, an appetite for that. Ah, uh, food joke or food pun. Um, but the other thing I would look at here is um, I, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea to take a look at a major national competitor either, because essentially, you know, yes, you are going to be trading on the brand of that local market um, because they are they're in the in the region, but they need to be competitive with a national player. Um, they need to be operating on the same level with, you know, a, a Hello Fresh or a um, a Freshly. Everybody's got the Fresh thing in their in their name, don't they? Um, and I, I guess that's because we want, we don't want we don't nobody wants rotten food. Um, anyway, um, so I would broaden it out. I would look at hey, who's a big national competitor or who you know um, that I can that I can pull into this mix. And that's going to get, you know, the other thing I like about that is a lot of the local options, um, t typically they're, they're not the best designed experiences. Um, I can tell you, uh, you know, Katie, um, Katie went through and she found some from San Diego that were like really great ideas. Like con conceptually they were, they were recycling their, their canisters and you get a credit if you bring your your if you reuse your food boxes and stuff like they had some decent they had some interesting ideas things that i haven't seen pop up from this exercise otherwise but the design of their site was just uh. so um so i would broaden it out when i'm looking through and looking at like positioning statement um features um so here you've got meal pal and this is more restaurant focused but Again, I don't think it. I don't think it's bad. I think I think what you're really looking at is, is okay. What what's the pricing structure like? Uh, this is like a, a 20 meal lunch. This is six meals per week. Getting an idea of what people are are seeing in the marketplace and how how people structure that 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 um, that selling point is interesting. Um, looking at the competitive advantages. Um, Ability to roll over unused meals, um, generous portion, sustainable packaging, like that. That goes back to that thing I was talking about this, with the San Diego one. Um, 
site is very no annoying to navigate as a new user. This is again what I was talking about with a with a local um, a local outfit. Um, no major design flaws. It's pretty intuitive. Some mismatch between system and real world using lifestyle boxes as the name for their subscription. A bit unpleasant having all the menu items on one page. So you're you're doing a good good job of going through and and I did see your heuristics doc which was here. Nope, that's first teacher heuristics was yeah over here. And you were pointing out there was some there were some interesting things that were happening. Um, it's not a, it's not not incumbent upon us to pick to break down why their site is kind of broken, but it is it is important for us to to realize like oh. You know that that's off-putting. Um, that's not something we want to have in our design. We don't want to hide the X. You know, these are these are things that in the prototype you're going to definitely want to avoid. But I also think these are probably just errors on their site, which is not uncommon. The other thing you mentioned was um, was you know is this site which was yeah front porch pantry is this you know first of all it's nice um, the um, like I'm geeking out over here. I'm like, eh, I just want to tighten that up. That line height's just too much. Um, but you know, it it looks okay. I mean, there's there's definitely some stuff that I would I would want to tweak. Um, but you you were saying like I'm not sure if they're around, and I I totally get that because when you go to their Twitter, <laughs> they haven't tweeted since like 2017. But if you look over on their Facebook. They tweet it, they, not tweet it, but they post it 10 hours ago. So I, I definitely think they're still around. Um, they, they've just got some, they've got some material that is not great. Like it, it just hasn't been updated a lot. Um, although somebody replied four days ago to something they posted in 2019. So um, they're, they're still there. Um, you know, and, and again, I look at the I look at their Facebook page. They they've posted since then, but um, but I would broaden this out one additional level. Go get a major national competitor in this mix, and I think you're good to go. Um, let's bounce on down to first teacher. So um, it says here, uh, I'd like to hear thoughts on site so far. Only page not done is make a donation. Uh, images need to be optimized, um, but that's what's on the site. Our planned images. Okay, so so obviously, if we go to make a donation, this page is still in in motion. There's going to be a donor box uh, shape here, so we're going to ignore that one for right now. Um, going back to the home page, it is unfortunate that their block is still existing but sometimes you just can't move the you can't move the client off of a so-so uh, logo and there's lots of so-so logos out there so I wouldn't fret over that I do think that some of your other options were better um, the bubbles particularly um, first teacher is a community of parents and caregivers uh, working together to prepare all of our children for success and uh, um, in kindergarten and beyond and get, get involved I always want to go through and check all the links just to make sure things are functioning um, I do I do like the fact that your your usage of the free pick illustrations is pretty consistent um, this you were talking about the the Squarespace overlays I'm guessing you're meaning that photos like this are going to be you're going, are going to be touched up uh, let's go to our stories. So this is our stories, and and one thing I noticed earlier, I, I do I do feel like like these headlines are pretty big, but I noticed earlier if I click down here on our stories, I get to the 404. So you, you definitely want to fix that. Um, but I also would encourage you to create a true 404 for this page. Uh, or not for this page, but for the site. So when you run into things like this, they get something back that feels like, oh, I've hit a 404. Right now, um, right now it's just kind of it, it's just kind of lacking. 
Um, so, uh, you know, and if you go into the, the panel off to the left hand side in Squarespace, uh, you should see 404 there under pages. Um, let's go to mission. There's the fruit stripe, which I, th I do think came out very nicely. I just, I just wish it would have worked its way somehow into the into the uh, branding. Um, change on two levels. Let's see our programs. Okay, let's go to let's go to program. Okay, so it looks like you've got some work to do here as well on the calendar. There's missing programs. And this is also one of those things where you want to, so we've talked about this before. You want to make sure they know how to update, like, um, if you go to our team, see what, what our team looks like. So here's our team. Um, this these look pretty large as far as the names go I would encourage you to take them down a bit um, mainly mainly I'm, I'm just mainly concerned if you get like one long name in here it's gonna throw everything off off kilter uh, let's look at the advisor council as well okay so I think I think this size works pretty well um, but again you know, I I know that you're probably probably um, yeah I don't know I mean I would just adjust it down I think I think just adjusting it down future proofs it a bit um, so let's look at our supporters yeah this is one of those situations where I think that if you if you would put the content to the side and the photo to the to the other side it would work better it's just it just becomes hard to read you're stepping on the photo there's a lot of text here um, I would I would just really encourage you to I would encourage you to take a, a slightly different approach for this just because there's so much text the other thing that you could do is you could put a little text over it and then like add the graph afterward like something like that but but having the you know, there was another place where this is happening and I feel like it's it, it's just not it's not a great experience. Um, it's not a great reading experience. Um, I would I would stay away from this much text over an image. There there are ways that that like a headline fine. The body copy is always going to be questionable. Um, you're moving in, in between lights and darks. It's just something I'd stay away from. Um, let's go ahead and go to get involved. I think we may be. Okay. Now, see, that's a, that's this is a pretty nice image, um, and it works. There's no there's no content over the top of it like it. I think we've seen this page though. Yeah, we have. Okay, so this is this is the other, and let's go to our mission. And see, this is this is kind of an example of you know, this is a photo. Where there's a there's some type over the top of it, it's okay. It's not great. It's a lot of type, but the this is this is less egregious to me than the option the one that we looked at a minute ago with where it had a headline and paragraphs of type underneath. Uh, it's just something I want I'd, I'd, I'd stay away from. But here I, I think I'm okay with it. Um, yeah. So I, you know overall we found this one broken link. Uh, but that that gives us an opportunity to talk about four or four pages and you know fixing that um, there are a couple of image issues where I would I would definitely go and attempt to um, read about or get involved it's kind of it's kind of weird this feels almost footer ish um, as a redirect I'm, I'm not sure if this is just too much but um, that's the other thing I'm, I'm kind of interested in 
like when, when I go over the about, I get the first teacher and okay, so this is, yeah, this one's, this one's really rough. Um, this is a situation where I would attempt to even, if, if you were wanting uh, text over the top of this image, especially through here, this is almost illegible. Um, I would consider doing a screen block or something behind it to clean that up. Um, otherwise, I think that you can crop this. You can crop this photo basically like this, and it's still a great photo. I, I don't think this this information adds anything. And I, you know, I think you could just like say text photo, um, but that would that would make that a lot better. Um, yeah, so mostly it's just uh, here I'm seeing some image, some image updates that are necessary, um, but otherwise I think you're fine. Um, I, I would like to see another pass at this, and then obviously this get make a donation. I, I want to get get eyes on that before before we shove off from this, okay? Um, but otherwise, pretty good, pretty good. In these, some tweaking necessary, obviously. All right, so um, I did want to check in here. I keep seeing notes here. So Abby, um, you've got a question on styling components and should I make separate style components from the original wireframe components so the wireframe stay black and white? So here's an interesting, uh, here's an interesting idea. Um, you have a lot of wire, your wireframe, you know, if you want to preserve your wireframe and you're worried about um, the, you're worried about the components, I'm just gonna use Ricardo's, um, so Ricardo's working over here in his exercise uh, project and he's got components that have been created. But if I if if Ricardo wanted to and he's like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a totally different design. Um, obviously you could make variants, okay? But if you want to just like really quickly um, really quickly uh, save where you're at on a particular thing and you're worried about the connectivity to a component, I just copy paste. Like just drop everything into a new file there I've got all the information that was in my existing components but I've thrown it into a new file just for safekeeping okay um, and now I can go in and adjust my components to my heart's content um, I would rather do that than create duplicates of all my components um, simply because that's a lot of work um, I would rather I would rather to say okay my, my backup wireframe is over there. I can refer to it later for, for reference, but now I can go through and I can edit all my components because if you're doing this the way that I would like you to do it, you have, you have basically built out your wireframe and now you're gonna go through and begin editing those components. I don't want you to have to worry about going through and detaching all of those components so you can save the quote, wireframed version. Although the other thing you could do is you could go through and make a variant of it and say, okay, you know, that was the black and white. Now here's the style. And then you could go through and change. It's just, you know, how much of that work do you really want to do? Do you really need to save? Do you need, do you really need to, do you need to have that wireframed version of the component available to you in your design system? And my, my answer to that is probably not. You need the final version. You don't, you don't want that wireframe version showing up somewhere later in your prototype anyway. So, um, so I, would, I would just make a copy of your wireframe, throw it off to the side and say, okay, that's my, that's my original. I'll come back to it if I need, need to. And all you have to do there is just copy and literally paste and the whole thing will go. Um, back to Ricardo though. Um, and that, that is a good question to bring up, uh, Abby. Um, back to Ricardo, we've got your prototype and I can see there's a lot of action happening here. So now what I wanna do is I, I just wanna kind of, before I even zoom in, I just wanna kind of see what you've got from a, from a pure prototype perspective. Um, so we've got chicken for every occasion. 
Um, I've got search and search, and I'm, I'm not sure why I've got two searches here, but that, that's fine. I've got strawberries, bacon, chicken, pasta, seafood, salad. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm getting some inter interaction here. Uh, the arrows, eh, you know, they're a bit large for where they're at. They kind of feel, they kind of feel like they're wedged into that space. Um, the grid here isn't quite working. If I if I carry this up from the side, you know, it's kind of like this is this Im this information is inset within that image. What well, it's already inset within the image, but I, I do think that you could you could come down and you could place it here. I am kind of wondering, is it trying to line up with eat? I'm just trying to figure out where it's lining up. It's kind of near eat, but it doesn't feel quite like it. Um, let's go ahead and click on um, Okay, so I'm just gonna hit chicken All right, so some of this is a bit spacing related um, So it looks like you've you've adjusted the shape here a bit, but I look at the five stars and Gonna go back to chicken Nope. Okay, so how do I get back? Also, I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide the top bar and footer so we can do this a little more efficiently. Um, I know I can hit that, but it doesn't do anything for me. Okay, so I've searched for chicken. This five star, the spacing here is off. I mean, basically when I'm looking at the interior spacing, I want this interior spacing to be the same all the way around. Right now, this is really close to the edge. Um, I think that, I think that, well, okay, gotta go back. Um, let's do this again. I'm trying to click, but I'm not quite sure what's selectable. Okay, chicken selectable, got it. Um, the new popular, this is a really small touch zone. So I'd, I would want it to be, I'd want this to be more significant in size. Uh, it seems like if, if this is shifting, these would probably reorder. Um, like there's, should be some adjustment there. Um, if we go in here to tortilla soup, let's, um, this should be a personal story or recollection of this photo. Okay, so you've got, trying to, okay. So one of the challenges here is, and we're gonna kind of come back through, all right, let's go back to chicken. So one of the challenges here is how do I, how do I cycle through from one to the next how you know you know if I click this chicken and I keep trying to click chicken because that should take me back to and then then I'm having to double click okay so here I okay that one went here I click and then I have to click again click okay so that went but if I click here I have to click click again all right so there's some prototyping there's a prototyping hiccup there. Let's take a look at that. Um, interesting. So these are all centered up on to be on click. It should just be after a delay. If I, if I hover um, well I, I get it you're, you're trying to say okay this is clickable but then you have to click again the interesting thing here is when I oh, okay so this this version of it is coming back this should be on okay so why isn't that available for on hover 
It's like something is, something's off here while hovering's not available. Um, interesting. Okay, so we've got this. And now one click, it takes us to this page, right? And then, yeah, I wanna like disconnect that for a second and just kind of, I wanna reconnect it. So here on, interesting. So you've got, there's something up with this shape that won't allow you to hover in the same manner that you have here, right? Because here, this is a while hovering, open overlay, totally get that, while hovering. And this is, let's take a look at this shape. So it's, it's as if there is a hover already here. Okay. Let's take a look at that real quick. No. I'm gonna take that one away. For whatever reason, it was sh that interaction was showing up there. So I'm, I've removed the interactions. We're just going to now add one. Now, while hovering is now available to us, open overlay. Um, manual and then from there it should click back so let's take a look at that real quick and now we come back to the start all right so chicken broccoli Devon you know it, it's working now I click it it goes back the thing I'm looking for there is looking for consistency um, you know because I'm not looking to come back to this page or I'm not looking to come back to this page if I'm over here and I click delete. What I really would like to do if I'm on this page is be able to click chicken and make it back. Because that's what breadcrumbs that's what breadcrumbs typically do. Um, breadcrumbs, you know, if I'm if I'm in here and I say, oh, you know what, I'm in ye old chicken, I should be able to take this and one other one other fun thing that I like to do is I'm looking for page, you, you've called it page two, and I'm not gonna get into naming conventions at the moment, but, um, so I'm gonna sit here, add an interaction, I'm gonna say on click, on click, go to navigate to page two, and, you know, you could do the same for home as well, um, but really what I'm, what I'm looking for in this is, can that get me back to page two? Because here I can get here and I can go back to the home page. Now I can go here, go back in, I can get back to page two. So this, these little navigation loops are, are really important when you're clicking around a prototype. So from a prototype perspective, we we fixed a couple of issues, but I'm I'm still looking for I need a larger touch zone here that actually impacts the order. I do think that you want this to to switch. Um, I need some greater fidelity refinements here. The spacing just isn't very good right now. Um, when we come back over to the home page, this spacing is tight. I'm not. Sh I'm still not sure what the difference between this chicken and that chicken is. Um, I'm looking for alignment um, on these items. And then as we scroll down, I am looking for, uh, you know, I, I see, I see these uh, arrows and I'm just not 
I'm not I'm not sure this design is is very strong right now. So I do think some additional work is needed here, um, you know, to to really elevate this. And I, and I think it starts with the, the, those arrows being a little better. Um, also look out for um, spelling errors as you go through. You can't have any spelling errors in the prototype. And this is where I would encourage you to come back and utilize a plugin like, let's go search for plugins. Um, I want to say that it is, um, is it spell checker that was the one that I like. Yeah. Okay. So so let's quickly come back over here. I've got a bunch of spell checkers installed, but there was one that I used recently um, that I thought was pretty good by comparison. I think it was spell checker, but sometimes I just have way too many. Yeah, I did select one text layer. How about that? Yeah, this is the one I like, spell checker. So go get that, install that, and then let's just go through this this document and find find all the issues, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna wrap it up for today's edition of the Feedback Loop. Thanks so much to um, Ricardo, Abby, Bryn, and um, who else did I work with? Eve. Sorry. Uh, thanks so much to everybody who participated today. I look forward to seeing all of you again. Well, I'll see some of you here, here in a bit. The rest of you, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Take care. I tell people all the time, if you're looking for a design mentor, then you should definitely work with Chris. You gotta 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 work with Chris. If you're thinking about joining the program or working with Chris, don't hesitate, reach out and sign up.